Jehovah, praise God. I want to take this opportunity to thank God for his grace today. He's given me his grace and uh, I'm alive because, uh, because of his grace. I also want to thank my bishop, Bishop Dr. David Kemani Makime, who's given me this opportunity to stand on this altar and preach the word. My bishop and uh, Reverend Mary, may God bless you abundantly as you continue to raise, um, as you continue to raise sons in this ministry. God bless you. I want us to pray before, before we get into the word. Uh, let's pray. Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, I thank you, I honor you, because you are God, and there is no God like you. God of Israel, you alone are God. There is no other God apart from you. You are the only creator. All things were created by you and for you, and Jehovah we are going to serve you and you alone will not serve any other God. Father, I subject this spiritual realm under your authority. And oh Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare and decree no power, no spiritual authority apart from your authority that will, that will operate in this place. I declare that you have exclusive right to this spiritual realm, to this altar, to this message. I pray, Jehovah God, for the leading of your Holy Spirit. And as we start, Jehovah God, let your Holy Spirit lead me. I subject myself under the authority of the Holy Spirit. Jehovah, I thank you. I exhort you in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, I started on a message advancing and sustaining the kingdom of God through prayer and I was talking about spiritual warfare and uh, we looked at the scripture in the book of Matthew eleven twelve, and the Bible says that the kingdom of God suffers violence and violent people shall take it by force and today I want to do part two of the same message. The message that we started last week. I want to do part two of that message. Uh, because um, in the days we are living in, we cannot make it without spiritual warfare. In the days we are living in, we need to have spiritual warfare that's coordinated spiritual warfare aggressive spiritual warfare with the people with people with a military mind because we need to take over the influence of the church we need to take over as the church because we have lost our influence into the world when we talk about uh, violence the King James Fashion talks about forceful. Force, forceful men will take it by force. I explain when, we, when we, we talk about violence or force, we are talking about strength. We are talking about mighty. We are talking about using strength or military force to overpower by force. The kingdom, when we talk about the kingdom of God, I want us to know that in the world today, there are, let me talk about two kingdoms that are operating. <clears throat> there is the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of creation. God created all things. 
and he rules and reigns over all things. When Satan, when Satan was thrown from heaven, he came down on earth. He established a kingdom. He established a worldly system. And this kingdom, this worldly kingdom is what is fighting the church today. The time when Jesus Christ came, came on earth from heaven, he did an invasion. He invaded the kingdom, of the, the kingdom of the world. He invaded the kingdom of hell. And he established the kingdom of God. After he established the kingdom of God, he declared the kingdom of God on earth. He went back, leaving the Holy Spirit, he went back to heaven. And when we talk about the world system that was established by Satan on earth, there are various things. Today, I want to talk about influence. But the kingdom of Satan that was established on earth, that we are fighting, we are fighting that, that system. We are fighting the world. We are, fight, we are in a war. Another day I was in prayer and when I got deep into prayer, God gave me a revelation. I saw, uh, God showed me the influence that the church had initially. And as I looked, that influence got smaller and smaller and smaller. And uh, at one point, God told me, it's time to fight that we may get back the influence of the church. And when I woke up, I watched spiritual warfare, but I was asking God, how do we do this? Because the influence of the church in the world got smaller and smaller and smaller. And... Uh, and it's like the church was surrounded. The church was besieged, And uh, we need to fight and take over. When we talk about the systems of the world that are influencing the church. We are talking. We are talking about evil. Wicked forces that are operating on earth. We are talking about systems religious systems what is our work on earth let me let me talk a little bit about influence and then uh, i'll explain what our work is on earth and i want us to look at the book of uh, look at the book of acts chapter 19 i'll uh, i'll read quite uh, Quite a number of verses in this scripture, Acts verse 19. But uh, I want us to look at influence. When we talk about influence, what are we talking? We've seen that Satan has already established his systems on earth. Their political system, people with materialistic minds. Satan has established his, uh, his systems on earth financial systems he has established quite a quite a number of systems and i will i will show you what our work is on earth what 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 are we here to do what are we here to do on earth i will show you the work that we should do that's where i said last week we need men of valor we need people who, who, who are uncompromising people who will be ready to take over the in, to take back the influence of the church people who will be ready people who are not selfish who will be able to sacrifice themselves sacrifice what they do sacrifice what they have so that they will stand to see the influence of the church back uh, when we look at uh, Acts chapter 19, I said I'll, uh, 
I look at quite a number of scripture, quite a number of verses from from Acts chapter nineteen, and uh, I want us to look at Paul. I want us to look at Paul and the work that Paul did in Ephesus. In Ephesus, Paul went to Ephesus, stayed there for two years. And I just want us to look at the work that he did in Ephesus. I want us to look at the work that he did in Ephesus and the strategy that he employed. The strategy that he employed and uh, the achievements that he got. Uh, if we read Acts chapter 19, I'm going to read verse 8. And then I'll continue from there. In verse 8, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing pers uh, persuasively about the kingdom of God. Paul went to Ephesus and for three months he was in the synagogue and he was teaching, arguing with the people, teaching the gospel. And the Bible tells me that persuasively he argued in the synagogue. When we look at Paul, he has gone to Ephesus. If you remember, is that Ephesus was an economical city. And in Ephesus, there were many gods. But the main god who was worshipped in Ephesus was Diana, goddess, a goddess called Diana. This is the god that was worshipped in Ephesus. When Paul got into Ephesus, he needed to, to, to have a spiritual strategy on how he was going to influence the people of Ephesus. And when, when uh, you look at this verse that we've read, he was in Ephesus, he has gone to, he has reached Ephesus, and he need now to start the work that he had gone to do in Ephesus. I see a strategy. Because Paul knew that the synagogue is where the Jews used to meet and, uh, and discuss the word. And because he needed to influence these people that the world can be preached, he used a strategy. The first place that he went into was the synagogue. After the synagogue, he went to the school of Taranus. Two years he was there. This was a school of philosophers. So he went there to argue with them about the word of God. And another thing, Paul was anointed by God. So through that anointing and the power that he had, he influenced the people. He, uh, Paul did miracles, signs and wonders in Ephesus. As we continue reading, I want us to look at uh, verse 20. Verse 20. In verse 20 of Acts chapter 19, verse 20, I'll read. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. Paul has gone to Ephesus. And like we said, Ephesus, Ephesus was an economical city. They had their own gods and Paul has gone to Ephesus and he employed a strategy by going to the synagogue, going to the school of philosophies and for three years he was arguing with them. He was teaching them about this God, God of Israel. He was influencing the people. Now I want us to look about influence. Like I said, God showed me 
that the church initially the church had a lot of influence but by and by as as the church went on it lost it and uh, it became smaller and smaller and smaller i want us to look at uh, the meaning of influence because as we've read Paul, the Bible says that after Paul preached in the synagogue, he preached in the school of philosophy. He, he taught them, argued with them about God, and he walked with power and authority. He did miracle signs and wonders. What do we see? We see Paul influencing the city of Ephesus. We'll see what happened later. But I want us to see what when we talk about influence, when we talk about influence, what are we talking about? Because when the church started to grow in Ephesus, when people left their gods, left their ways, left their culture, when people stop stopped worshiping their gods and they start worshiping the God of Paul in the name of Jesus that meant that Paul had Paul had gained a grip and people were listening to him so what was this this was influence the meaning of influence is the power to affect the way someone or something develops we are talking about influence. And here, I want you to, sh I'll show you various types of influence. And one of the way you can be able to gain influence is by waging spiritual warfare. Through prayer, through spiritual warfare, you can gain influence. So what's the meaning of influence? I'll repeat that again. That the power to affect the way someone or something develops behaves or think without using direct force or order that's influence and when we talk about influence there can be good influence there can be bad influence influence means to flow when uh, when someone comes with a certain pattern of thought or an idea, then he sells that idea to you. When you agree, he influences you to flow with the idea. And we've seen influence happens without using force, direct force or order. It's by persuading people, by talking, by teaching, by prayer, you can have influence. And I've said influence is to flow. In the world today, there is a world system that's, that's at work. And when Jesus Christ came on earth, he invaded the kingdom of Satan, the world system. And he established a new order of things. And uh, this is the kingdom of God. And as the church, as the preachers, just as Paul did... Our work is to influence the world. Our work is to take over the world system. When Jesus came down, came on earth from heaven, his main work was to take over and colonize. We were colonized by the British. And because of that, I think most of us can agree with me that we dress like them. We talked like them. We bought their culture. We adapted their culture. We buy goods from them. And when we were growing all over, there were Land Rovers and uh, uh, British cars were all over. Land Rovers, Leyland, and uh, many other, many other, um, many, many other brand of cars. So why? Because when they came, they colonized us. We were brainwashed. They overcame us. They controlled us. And they subjected us to the authority. The British government. I want us to open up our minds. 
We are surrounded. The world is quickly eating up the church. And the church is losing influence. We are here on earth to do what the British government did when they invaded Kenya. We are here to colonize the world. We are here to brainwash the people of the world. We are here to overcome the world systems that have been set by the devil. We are here to control. We are here to subject them under the authority of our kingdom. When I look around, when I was thinking of this divination of influence, I realized one of the things, one of the areas where the church is losing it is when we come to entertainment. I know that what you expose yourself too much to, either you're reading books on that line, what you expose yourself too much to, Either you are watching a lot of movies. We've seen people killing because of watching too many horror movies. If uh, whatever you expose yourself too much to, it becomes part of your character. And uh, it influences you, your decision, the way we, you live and how we do things. When we talk about the entertainment industry... And this is one of the biggest industries in the world. We talk about the TV. We talk about social media. We talk, uh, the, the, these things have influenced the way we do things, the way we make decisions, the way we dress, the cars that we drive. One thing that I see is that everyone wants to dress and uh, We've bought in the idea of fashion. People don't dress to be decent. They dress to be sexy. Because the entertainment world has taught us that we have to, be, to look sexy. We have to drive big cars, live in a big mansionette because that's what we are watching. And you look around, everybody wants to, wants to follow the fashion industry because that's where the entertainment industry is taking us. And this industry, the entertainment industry, the Hollywood, the Bollywood, all the woods that we have, they are affecting the church. They are affecting us. They are influencing us. We need to stand at the church. We need to pray. We need to argue. We need to preach. We need to tell our children about these things because they are quickly influencing our society and very soon our society will be another Hollywood. When we talk about influence, it denotes power whose operation is in, invisible and, no, and known only by its effect or power whose cause and operation are unseen. You'd think when, you are, when, when uh, someone is on their phones or on TV the whole day, you'd say it will not cause any harm. But let me tell you, slowly, it's influencing our kids. We've left our kids to be taught by the televisions and the phones and the Googles and all the other social medias. And what we should understand is that the influence of this entertainment, social media and all this, slowly, we might not know it, but slowly it's affecting the way this generation that's after us do things. Those of us who were born before 60s or let me say 70s, if you look at them and those who are born after that, completely different. The reason they are different, some of us when we were growing up, there were no televisions. There were only those small black boxes. And uh, uh, after, after 11 o'clock, uh, they were closed. So there were no midnight movies. So, I want you to know that when we talk about influence, 
possibly even the way you are dressed today is a sign of the influence the media has had on you. Possibly even the car that you are driving because every big car, anything that's been advertised, there has to be a sexy woman or man and that's what everyone wants because that's the influence. We, we've been influenced. You're not choosing a car because of its performance. And the seller knows they want to show you that the, the car is sexy. And that's what possibly that's where you bought that car. That's where you bought that dress. That's why you are living in the house that you are living in. The way that you're living because you've been influenced by the media. And we've said... The, their costs are unseen. These are unseen powers. You will not be able to see them. You will only be able to see the effects. When we talk about our children, yes, there is a generation gap. They are different from us. But it's because of the influence they've been under. They've been under influence uh, of the world. It's time we stop. It's time we said no. It's time we said as a church, let's talk about these things. Let's wage spiritual warfare. Let's not just sit when our kids are getting into drugs. Let's not just sit when, when, when the world is telling our kids it's, it's, it's okay to have a girlfriend. It's okay to be sexy. It's okay. Let's not just sit because the church, we are losing it. I see people dressing sexy when they come to church. But let me tell you, it's a time now we start influencing the people around us. Let's start influencing them. When we talk about influence, the, ent the, the entertainment world is a moral power. It's a moral power that's operating, influencing our children, influencing us, influencing the way we think, influencing our morality, the media. When we talk about influence, it can be two ways. You can influence someone positively. Power of truth operating in the mind. If we preach the truth of the gospel, if we preach the truth that was left on earth by Jesus Christ, just as Paul did in, the, in Ephesus, he argued persuasively with the people. He showed them, he read, he went through the scriptures with them and he showed them, what, uh, the, he revealed the power of the word of God, the power of the kingdom of God and slowly he influenced the people. When I talk about the power of the truth, I'm talking about the, the word of God. There would be no other truth apart from the truth of the word of God. If we expose our children to the truth, if we expose the world to the truth, if we continue to preach without tiring, the truth, the truth, they will be filled with the truth and they will operate in, the truth will operate in their mind. They will do rational They'll do rational decisions based on the word of God as the influence of motives or argument or prayer. We can use prayer. We can use arguments. We can come up with strategy to make sure that our children sit under teachings and they are taught. They know the word of God. So they'll, they'll do their decision through the word of God. When we talk about influence, we look at Ephesus. Paul's influence was a spiritual power. I know when Paul got into Ephesus, he was praying. He was waging spiritual warfare. He was arguing with them. And as he continued to do it in the spiritual world, there was a takeover in the spiritual world. And people started following Paul. So when we talk about godly influence, this is a spiritual power. Power of God can be able, divine power that can be able to change the mind of the people and influence the mind of the people through the Holy Spirit. 
Uh, let's look at, uh, let's, let's get deeper into this scripture. Acts verse 19. Acts chapter 19. Let's get deeper into this word. Because I want us to understand about influence. You know, we say, uh, it's okay. Let them have that phone. If uh, everyone in their age have it, but you have no control of how they're going to use that phone. And if you, we've not taught our children, if they're not under godly influence, then it will be very hard for us to control them. So this is a time that we need to pray, wage spiritual warfare, accompanied by the word of God. Because even as we continue to pray, prayer and evangelism should be, uh, we, should, we should first invest in prayer, spiritual warfare, spiritual takeover. We pray and we take over in the spirit before we go to preach. Because once we do that, we'll have destroyed the influence that upon these people. And we'll be able to, to take over. As a military, as a church, we'll be able to take over. Let's go to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 19. Verse two. We are still on chapter 19. And I want us to look at verse 24. And I'll read. For a certain man named Demetrius, a, silver spray, a silversmith, which made silver shrines of Diana, but no small gain into the craftsmen. I want you to show you how the godly influence, after Paul did whatever he did in Ephesus, he stayed there for two years, arguing, teaching, praying, uh, demonstrating the power of God. After those two years, we see a scenario. There was a silversmith called Demetrius. Demetrius, after Paul preaching, after Paul talking persuasively in the synagogue, in the, in the schools of philosophy, we, we, it reached a point people were influenced by Paul teaching and they changed they changed their religion. Or let me say they changed their pattern of worship. And the Matarius used to make shrines of gods. And they used to sell. People used to come from afar to buy. But this time round, because of the influence of the word of God, because of the influence of the man of God on the city of Ephesus, we see Paul, the servant of God, influencing the whole, the whole city. And we see he went to a point where he influenced their economic, their economic systems. Nobody was buying Demetrius had lost business because nobody was buying. And we see even the religion pattern in that city changed. The social systems, the way people did things, it changed because Paul preached. I'm talking about godly influence because we say that in the world today, in the world today, there are two kingdoms that are operating. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. And what, what I'm speaking or what I want us to know. That that influence that the world has over the church. That even people are dressing to be sexy when they are coming to church. Instead of being decent. That's the, that, that's the influence we are saying no to. And just as Paul influence the, the efficiency we are able we are able to influence the people to influence the decision of the people to influence the economic system to influence the religious system to influence the social system because we have the power of God 
We need to be committed to prayer. We need to be committed to spiritual warfare. If we have to advance the agenda of the kingdom of God and sustain it on, on earth, we need to be, we need to be warriors. We need to have military minds. We need to say, no, we cannot let this generation perish. And we stand on, we fight on for this generation that's behind us. Let's go to verse 26. <coughs> verse 26 of the book of Acts. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away much people saying that they, are, that they be no gods which are made with hands we are talking about one man who was called by God to be an apostle to be an apostle to the Gentiles and this one man Paul if you read this scripture inside it we see the power of influence this man Demetrius has called the people in related trade and he's telling them you know what this fellow Paul has been able to influence, convince everyone that uh, gods that are handmade are not gods at all. And he talked about God of heaven. We see Paul, like I said, through his preaching, through godly influence, through godly power, through godly godly anointing and authority that was upon his life he was up, he was able to raise men to raise men who who championed his gospel and they were able to do it influence the city of ephesus and these scriptures say it's not only ephesus but they did it the whole of asia let's read this scripture again moreover you see and hear that not only in Ephesus, Demetrius was saying, it's not only here, it's not only here that Paul is colonizing. Because I say that's what we've been called to do, to colonize, to brainwash people. We've been called to overcome, to control, and to subject people under the authority of the kingdom of God. Because when we talk about the kingdom of God, we are talking about a kingdom that... Uh, Jesus Christ invaded. Jesus Christ invaded. And he left the work to us to continue with the work that he started. The work of advancing the gospel. The, and uh, Christianity, when we talk about a kingdom, because this is a kingdom. A kingdom has a culture. A kingdom has a culture. And our culture is the biblical culture. That's what we should advance. That's what we should fight for. The biblical cancer. Because the world, the, the world culture, the culture of TV, the culture of Hollywood, the culture of Bollywood, and the culture of entertainment is taken over. We have to say no to those influences and stand. So the materials told them, but almost throughout a year, through Paul has persuaded Turned. When we talk about the word persuasive, persuading, we are talking about influence. That people are able to listen to you and follow what you're saying. And follow what you're saying. You are able to persuade them, to convince them, to change their lifestyle, to change the way they live. And I pray that God is going to raise warriors. God is going to raise men with godly influence, with godly anointing, with godly power. And they'll go out. They'll go out there and extend that power, that influence to reach the world and convince the world that the culture of the Bible is the right culture, not the culture of Hollywood. It's time. It's time. And I'm calling an army. I know that God is releasing something in the spiritual realm. 
and we are going to have men and women men and women of influence who stand with the culture of the bible to colonize the world for jesus to take over the world for jesus to dominate the world for jesus and put everything under the kingdom of god paul Let's go to the book of uh, the book of Ephesians. After Paul had left uh, Ephesus, he went and wrote this letter, the letter of Ephesus, to them. And this letter, the, in this letter, he wanted to to show, to tell the Ephesians. That time he was there, what was happening in the spiritual realm. Paul, st Paul stayed in Ephesus for a time and uh, he, he wrote this book after leaving Ephes uh, after leaving Ephesus and he wanted everyone to know what was happening there. What was happening there. And uh, I want us to look at something in the spiritual realm. Like I said, these things are spiritual. We might take them as, uh, as uh, uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 6. We'll read from, from verse 10. We'll read from verse 10. And I want us to see something here. These things, we may think they are not spiritual, but they are spiritual. You know, Satan is strategic. And when we talk about the entertainment industry... We should look and see the spirituality in it. Because unless we know how these things are, are behaving and operating in the spiritual realm, we cannot be able to overcome them. Paul in verse, I'll read verse 10, then go to verse 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. This is Paul. He's writing to the church of Ephesus. And we've seen what happened in Ephesus. We've seen the scenario that was there. There were demonstrations because of the people. Because of uh, after, after Demeterius uh, addressed that crowd, there was a riot in the city. The whole town was in turmoil. They were shouting all over because of the influence, of godly influence that Paul carried with him and the work that he did. Then uh, when he was finishing his letter, he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mighty. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his mighty. So he was concluding his letter. He was writing to people that he had preached to. He was speaking to people who had seen the riot. And now he wanted to explain to them in, he wanted to explain to them what was happening in Ephesus. And I want, to, I want to show you, I want to show you what happened in Ephesus as Paul explained in verse 12. For we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of, of, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. This was Paul. He's telling them when I came to Ephesus, my, my, the war that I was waging as a warrior was not against flesh and blood. When we talk against flesh and blood, 
We are talking about people fighting each other. I, I, I had not come to Ephesus to fight. This is not a, this is not a military takeover. It's not a coup. No, it was a spiritual thing. So he's telling them, he's, he's telling them, when I came to Ephesus, I wasn't wrestling uh, with the, I wasn't wrestling with the people. It, this was not about military. This was not about, uh, this was not about military takeover. It wasn't a coup. But I was fighting against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of, of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. This was Paul. He's revealing this to us. Yes, I was in Ephesus. All these things happened. You saw the riots. And you saw the, mir the many miracles that happened and things that happened. And then after that, the riot that was in the city. This was accomplished. I wasn't fighting men. I wasn't fighting fresh and blood. But I, I was fighting against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the, da of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in the higher places. So when we talk about entertainment. I'm going to, later I'm going to talk about the, the seven mountains that the church is facing. The seven mountains that the church has to conquer. But one of them today I'm talking about influence. And to me, nothing has influenced the generation that's after us as much as media, as much as the entertainment industry. Nothing has, nothing has influenced them more than that. So Paul says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers. When we talk about principalities, we are talking about rulers. We are talking about powers. When we talk about powers, we are talking about authorities. When we are talking about the rulers of the darkness, of darkness of this world, you know, at times when we talk about these things, most of the time people think that uh, when we talk about authorities, when we talk about rulers, we are talking about maybe a force that's somewhere in there. But today I want to put this clear. There is a principle of creation that cannot be changed. That spirits do not operate on earth. And I hope this will be clear to every one of you who is listening to me. That spirits, it's, it's a spiritual, it's, it's a principle of creation that was set by God. That spirits do not operate on earth. So when we talk about powers, rulers, authorities... Let me show you how, how it works. When God wants to do anything on earth, he needs a man. God will choose a man. He can choose an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher. He can choose any of them. After they are chosen by God, he will fill them with his power and commission them. Those of us who are reading Mark chapter 3, the Bible says that Jesus called the 12 to himself. And the meaning of Jesus called the 12 to himself was to empower them, anoint them, and commission them to go and do the work that was ahead. That's how the kingdom of God works. They will choose men, then they will be anointed, they will be commissioned to go and do the work. 
God will not come himself, nor spirit will come on earth to do anything because it's a principle that the earth was given to man. So nothing can happen on earth unless man is involved. So when we talk about spiritual powers, when we talk about spiritual authorities, when we talk about spiritual forces, or the strong man, we normally say the strong man of this country, the strong man of this city. Yes, these are men that have demonic powers, that have been empowered by Satan to take over for him. So Paul is telling them, yes. He's telling them, yes. When I was there, this was not a matter of physical fight. It was a spiritual war. I was battling with, with the authorities that have been, that have been instituted by Satan. I, yes, I was battling with rulers of darkness. Yes, I was, these are the agents of hell that I was battling. And that's why I had a breakthrough. Brothers and sisters, this is the time if we need godly if we need godly influence on the world we have to adapt this strategy like Paul did with that understanding that these are men that have been given spiritual power by the kingdom by the kingdom of darkness by Satan by the devil to destroy and he has given him, he had give, he has given them extraordinary talents that our, you look at them and marvel by the things that they are doing. But those are, those things are meant to attract you so that you may take attention. Then they put what they want into your mind and in the mind of our children, they will influence us. So this is the time to say no. This is the time to stand as a church. This is the time to advance and to sustain the kingdom agenda through prayer, through spiritual warfare in the name of Jesus. This is the time. And Paul made it. Paul was able to turn Ephesus, the, t the city of Ephesus, upside down. You were able to change that city. Wherever you are, ask God to, uh, ask God to, ask God to accept you, commission you, anoint you, and take over that city for God. Take over that village for God. To start influencing the people. Train people. Argue with them. Teach them the word of God. <coughs> Teach them the word of God. And I'm telling you that in this generation, God is, God is raising up change, change agents. People who will change the world. People who will carry the gospel and change the world. Yes, this is the time. And I pray wherever you are, yes, even in your family, there is a battle to win. If you are born again, like I was the only one who is born again in our family, you must understand the reason God has allowed you to be born again is because there is a battle to win. You need to fight on. Fight on for your parents. Fight for your sisters and brothers. After you've won that battle, fight on for your village. Fight on for the city that you are living in. Fight on. Fight on. Influence that city positively. Yes. Influence that city. It's possible. Paul did it. We're going to do it. And as I close this teaching, I want you to know that the power of God is available to them that are willing. I want you to know that if you said yes, you want to be the end time warrior, warriors, people of integrity, people uh, with the spirit of Daniel who say I'll go against the current. I'll not do what everyone else is doing. I'll be different. The power of God is available. And God is waiting. The Holy Spirit of God is waiting. He's waiting for such men and women. He's waiting for such people that he may equip them to change the world, to influence the world positively. 
And this is my prayer. Wherever you are, God is going to, God is going to release that power to you. You could be listening to me and you're wondering. It starts by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because it cannot happen otherwise. You're talking about a kingdom. If, uh, you must be a member of the kingdom to receive the benefits of the kingdom. You cannot leave Kenya, go to the UK and claim a citizen benefit if you're not a citizen of that nation. If you want to be a change agent, if you want to be a man or a woman who will influence this generation, it starts by giving your life to Christ, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I pray that wherever you are, the Holy Spirit of God is going to convict you and you'll give your life to Christ. I want to wind up with a prayer and I want to pray, oh my God, that in this generation will have remnants. In this generation, God is going to raise men and women. And this is my call. That Father, God of Israel, in the name of Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, raise men and women. Those who listen to this life cast. And they are ready. They are ready to be, in, to, to have, uh, to be change agents. Uh, they are ready to influence the world. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, just as you filled Paul with your spirit, I prophesy that they will be filled by your spirit. They will be filled by your power. And Father, they will move on. They will move on with the power of an ox. And they shall change the world. They shall change the world. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this message, Jehovah God. I preached it just as you put it in my heart this day. Jehovah, in this city of royal race men and women, influencers, positive influencers, in this ministry, oh God, as we are led by our Bishop Jehovah God, as we continue to explore the world, Father, let there be a positive inf impact uh, that will influence the people. Raise the army in this ministry. Raise the army in this, in this city of Roero. Raise the army in this nation. Whoever is listening, Jehovah God, in their locality, raise the army. Raise the people. Establish them, O oh God. Stamp your authority in them and anoint them, O oh God, to influence the world. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that you're going to raise spiritual warriors. I pray that you're going to raise uh, men and women, oh God, who are going to take over this generation. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, do it now. Father, through this altar, I release your power. I release your power, Jehovah, to all that are willing to be end time warriors. I release your power, oh God, to all that are willing to be influencers, to all that are willing to be change agents, to them that are willing, oh God, Father, to sacrifice themselves for the kingdom. Father, anoint them, meet their provisions, equip them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I exhort you in Jesus' name. Amen. Them that have listened to me, you, wherever you are, just believe that I have prayed and God has done it for you. Because this is a time that in the kingdom of God, we need warriors more than ever before. Because like I said in the beginning, that I saw a vision, God was showing me a vision. And he showed me how the influence of the church was big initially. But uh, with time, the influence grew smaller and smaller and smaller. Then as I was praying, God was telling me, pray, fight. It's time, we, it's time we stood and fought for the church. And God is going to do it. Believe you've received that, spirit, that warring spirit. Believe that you've received the anointing of a change agent. Believe it's you. 
and it's going to happen to you. Start with your family, start with your locality, move on. There is a battle to win and the spirit of God is ready to, to enable you to win that battle. As I finish, you'd want to connect to this altar or to this message. Uh, you can uh, send, your, you can send your, your offering, your love gifts, whatever you'd want to send to connect to this altar as we continue to pray for you. And uh, our till number is 904260. That's our till number, Lipa and Pesa. And uh, when you do that, you connect to this anointing and God is going to bless you. I release the blessings of God to everyone. God bless you. Those who are listening to me, uh, those who are in church, the few who are in church, and those who are listening to this live cast, God bless you. Have a wonderful week wherever you'll be. Carry the influence of God. Be a change agent and accept that you are the person that God has anointed. God bless you. God do you good. Have a wonderful week. We meet again on Sunday. The same, uh, we meet again on Sunday for another live cast. God bless you. And let me pass the love of my bishop, Bishop Dr. David Kemani Makime. And uh, he's, uh, he greets all of you. And uh, God bless you. He's well, he's strong. And uh, his family, they are well. God bless you. And God keep you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.